<laughs> hey, good brother, why don't you start us off with the podiums, man? All righty. Uh, now, in politics, there's passion and then there's expediency. Passion is idealism, getting a person up and over to vote proudly. Expediency is voting generally, um, leaning toward convenience and practicality. I find passion burns out and dies, losing to expediency, which ends up winning in the end. It's happening in the Democrat primary, the Republican convention, and Virginia Beach's 84th House District. Let me tell you how. The Democratic primary has solid candidates, the kind of talent showing strength of the state party. Justin Fairfax, current Lieutenant Governor, Lee Carter, a delegate, Jennifer Carroll Foy, delegate who stepped down to specifically run for governor, and Jennifer McClellan, current Virginia Senator. An incredibly diverse field you think of when highlighting the Democrat Party, the party that sells itself as the best fit for minority communities. Then there is Terry McAuliffe, former governor, admittedly an older white guy, who's earned tens of millions as a banker, real estate developer, home builder, hotel owner, and internet venture capitalist. Big money and big name politics. And now with his entry in there, he sort of crowds out the field of truly promising and progressive candidates. His maneuver and likely easy victory in the June 8th primary exemplifies the Virginia way, a self-serving corporatist status quo, finding a way to stamp out the little guy and preserve the ruling class. The Republican convention in my eye didn't spare that. They selected Glenn Youngkin, former CEO of the Carlisle Group, worth himself over $300 million. There were significant amounts of my Republican friends who suggested Pete Snyder very hard. They also leaned into Kirk Cox, former Speaker of the House, and Amanda Chase has a great grassroots following. Many of those folks publicly admitted they didn't want to have to choose Youngkin, but with this being the selection, they now wish to fully support the nominee because the goal is to beat the Dems. That's where expediency comes in to suffocate passion. My good friend Monica is rightfully incredulous that the Republican Party ticket might actually come out looking more diverse than the Democrat ticket. And plenty of worthy and experienced minority candidates like McClellan were there for the picket. So on both sides, it is incredibly likely that they won't have who they're really wanting to vote for and they just want to beat the other side. So expediency made a group psychosis that scared off people from dynamic politicians that would engage the whole base. And the same is true in Virginia Beach's 84th district. A years long moderate Republican on the Virginia Beach School Board joined the Virginia Beach Democratic Committee and decided to run in the primary as a Democrat for a seat currently held by Republican Glenn Davis. By default, she's actually supported it before. And the political machines rallied around her, establishment Virginia money and educational money too. The crowding out effect takes hold again, stifling the ability of a bright, energetic, passionate Filipino progressive woman from seeking the seat. I've seen the comment sections, moderate Democrats in the area who might have easily have considered her if she ran unopposed, um, saw a mailer that the challenger put through stating Virginia Beach Democrats can see through the noise and they won't be fooled. And those moderate Democrats got rattled after reading it, believing the progressive challenger to be nasty. So they run to the known commodity who just so happens to be a known Republican. That's sort of the Virginia way. My Beach Brothers show friends, it's pernicious that way. And I want to use my soapbox to warn against it. Marcus, on to you. I think you nailed on the head with that. I agree with um, just about everything that, that you were saying. So you nailed it. You, you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, I, I think it's interesting. Um, that's actually the ticket that I predicted was going to win. Uh, was um, Youngkin, Winsome, and um, and Miares. I think the the Republican convention kind of proved um, a few interesting things. It proved that um, they, uh, yeah, the the party still wants someone who can attract and win and satisfy Trump voters. That that is very real. But they also want someone who is going to be a little bit more practical. I don't think they'll call it moderate. That's a really bad word when it comes to um, to, to conservative politics. But someone who is practical. Uh, and Winsome Sears, 
I I kind of knew that was going to happen when they kept trying to uh, one of the other um, lieutenant governor candidates kept making it a, a point to kind of diminish the fact that she came in late. And then uh, then they tried to do some polls. I mean, it looked like she was behind. She was a sleeper candidate. And she proves that the party is still looking for someone who is a solid conservative. But they do want someone who's authentic. Glenn Youngkin is authentically great at business. He's authentically smart. He's authentically talented. Winsome Sears is authentically a Marine, authentically conservative, authentically smart. And you got Miyars, who's authentic in, in, in all of those same ways. At the same time, he's also practical. Um, and I don't think they wanted someone who's establishment. Youngkin was very, is very new to the game. Winston Sears has been out of the game for almost 20 years. And Miyares is very practical. Again, I won't say Mark, but very practical in the sense that he's also written gun legislation. He wrote the Minority Business Commission bill, and I personally appreciate that because I took it to him. Um, but but he's also done things with both sides of the party. It's well known that when you're a, a new delegate up in Richmond, Democrat or Republican, Delegate Miares is going to help you at least learn the ropes, you know, help you learn where things are. and Just, just a genuine, authentically nice guy. Um, so Republicans want authenticity. Um, the Democrats have a little bit of a, a different thing. I guess we'll get to that later. But but yeah, so that's that's actually the ticket that I predicted. Um, I think it's going to be pretty formidable. Um, I think um, it's it's interesting because if the Democrats do nominate Terry McAuliffe, you have Glenn Youngkin, who spent all that time at the Carlisle Group. And what they do is they analyze growth, where the money goes, where the money comes from, strengths and weaknesses. What else is a campaign but an organization that has money coming in, money going out, it has strength and it has weaknesses. You have Terry McAuliffe, who's won and lost. And the Carlisle Group knows the winners from the losers, so he has everything he needs to analyze the heck out of Terry McCullough's political career. And he's going to master that. To come out of nowhere in the three and a half months, beat the establishment at a game they invented. <laughs> they never had. It wasn't a primary. It wasn't a convention in a, in a hall or a coliseum. They made this up, and he still won. And now the Democrats are going to put him up against someone who's got a track record for winning and losing. It's, it's almost looking like at this point they might need to go with someone who Young Kim can analyze like that. Mm. So We'll look further into that going yeah. forward. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So we already have the good sister Andrea saying that Terry is old news. Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, as you know, when I do my podiums, you know, I, my background is in education, finance, and entertainment. So I often kind of bring in the music into the conversation. So there was a song by a beautiful young lady who I first met on Good Times. <laughs> she was Penny. <laughs> And she had a song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Ooh, 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 yeah. And then there's this woman who is captivating, voice and in person, who has been belting out beautiful songs for centuries almost, it seems like, right? And her name is Stephanie Mills, and her song is what you gonna do for my loving? Tell me why. Uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this have to do with empowerment? Listen to the messages. What have you done for me lately? What you gonna do for my loving? So when we look at the politics of today, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, you know, Independent, you know, Red, Black, Green Party, Green Party, Purple Party, whatever. These are some of the questions that we really have to begin asking. So, if we're looking at a Terry McAuliffe, we might say, what have you done for me lately? 
<laughs> ooh, 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 yeah. If we're looking at a winsome Sears, what you going to do for, not with, after, what you going to do for our interest, our love, our money, our vote? What you going to do for that? Jennifer Carol Foy, what you going to do for that? Jennifer McLennan, what, what you, what you going to do? You know, start asking these candidates what have you done for me lately and what are you going to do and not only ask but get them to put it on paper you know put it on the record when i say put it on paper they may not send you a contract but they can put it on the record if you remember during the uh recent primary for the democrat party the national democrat party uh, the question kept popping up what are you going to do for reparations for the ascendance of enslaved Africans here in the United States of America and look in the United States of America never before have you ever heard candidates talking about reparations why did that happen because a number of us started saying what have you done for me lately what are you going to do for our loving City Council, what have you done for us lately? What are you going to do for our loving? School board, lieutenant governor, governor, delegate, what have you done for us lately? What are you going to do for our loving? And once we get them on the record, we need to push it. For instance, Coming up very soon, the Hampton Roads Black Caucus is going to have a discussion on uh, citizen review panels for police oversight. You know, there are some places in the great United States of America where they already police the police. If you believe that everything should have oversight, you know, we have managers at McDonald's. There are supervisors at your hospital to ensure that you get quality health care. If you believe in oversight, let your voice be known and ask them, what are you going to do for my continued loving? And if they're a candidate, turn that into a t-shirt. <laughs> Salute the queen on that one. Yeah, so that's my podium for the day. What have you done for me lately? What are you going to do for our loving? I'm Seiko Varner. My time is up. Peace out to Brooklyn. One love to my beloved country, the United States of America. Two up and two down for VA, O-H-I-O, to planet Columbus, Ohio. Columbus is a planet. <laughs> Brooklyn is a blood type. And we love you. Ha, 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 ha.